It is January, and the woods of East Tennessee sleep under a white blanket. The forest appears silent, but its heart keeps slowly beating. These rounded hills are part of the Appalachians, one of the oldest mountain ranges on the planet. Their tree covering includes conifer woods, but mostly deciduous forests, which at this time appear pale, almost colorless. But they harbor more life than meets the eye. Some of it active, if elusive. Some of it dormant, but waiting for the cycles of nature to bring the yearly awakening to the Appalachian woods. With a plumage that fits this world of faded colors, the Dawny woodpecker seeks bugs that hide under the bark of the dormant trees. More colorful birds also remain here all through the winter. The bright blue in the bluebird's back is an optical trick. Its feathers are gray but look blue as a result of light refraction on microscopic grooves. The same trick accounts for the colors of the blue jay. On clear winter days its fake blue shines bright as the bird looks for the gift of the oak, the acorns. At the feet of some oaks the ground can be littered with acorns, but that is not where the tree needs its offspring to grow. The jays eat some of the acorns there and then, but they are competitive and cache some food where other jays won't find it. Many such hidden acorns are never found, and in time they germinate. In return for feeding the jays, the oak gets its seeds dispersed far and wide. The most compulsive acorn hoarder in the Appalachians is not a bird, but a mammal, the eastern grey squirrel. In fact, it is the most important agent for the regeneration of these forests. Squirrels eat the damaged nuts first and bury the intact ones for later consumption. About a third of those cached nuts are never found, resulting in the germination of millions of new trees. The squirrel is a true forest animal and it only feels really safe in the trees where it spends time grooming its lush winter coat. It is a famously proficient climber. Its ability to rotate its hind feet allows it to descend head first along vertical trunks. But while on the ground, the squirrel is all eyes and ears ready to jump at the least sign of danger. There is good reason for its caution, because these forests are home to the red-tailed hawk, a powerful hunter of birds and small mammals. Smaller than the red tail, the Cooper's hawk is an extremely efficient predator. Its maneuverable flight is ideal for hunting among the trees.
in the late winter, the resident couple choose a place for their nest and defend it from any competitors, including the red-tailed hawk, which eventually leaves the area. A smaller relative of the grey squirrel, the eastern chipmunk is also a fastidiously clean animal, keeping its coat in immaculate condition. It can climb well, but feels safer on the ground, where it hides in its burrows or in crevices under logs or rocks. Its usual bird-like alarm call warns of danger on the ground, but it uses a different call for danger coming from the air. This is a useful precision for an animal that is just the right size for a Cooper's hawk prey. A bird that has little to fear from hawks is the eastern wild turkey, with adults weighing as much as 12 kilos. Hunted by humans to the verge of extinction, the turkey has made a comeback. In winter, they walk through the forest seeking acorns and other nuts that make up a substantial part of their diet. Male turkeys are larger than the females and display the beard, a tuft of modified feathers hanging from their chest. The presence of the larger inhabitants of these woods can be almost impossible to detect. Adult white-tailed deer are mostly free of natural predators in the Appalachians. But they rarely lower their guard. Anything suspicious will cause them to raise their namesake tail in alarm and flee. One could say that they run from ghosts, because in the past they would be chased by wolves and cougars, long exterminated here by humans. Now it is gunshots that the deer must try to evade. At the laurel green creeks of the Appalachians, amphibians defy the cold and remain active all through the winter. Despite their unprepossessing appearance, the dusky salamanders are remarkable creatures. They have developed a unique mechanism of jaw aperture, where the mandible remains static and the skull rotates upwards. The slimy or woodland salamanders are a group of species which don't have an aquatic larval stage in their development. They leave the egg already in their adult form. 
one of the most striking salamanders of the Appalachians can actually be found quite far from the water. This red spot newt walks across the forest floor in broad daylight, quite unconcerned about predators. It started life as an aquatic larva, but now spends a couple of years in a terrestrial stage known as Red Eft, traveling far from its natal pond. Its bright colors advertise its toxicity. Eventually, it will find a new pond and pass to the third stage of its life, becoming aquatic again and shedding its red color for a discreet greenish-brown. The final destination of the red eft travels in the Appalachians is often a beaver pond. The margins of beaver ponds can be recognized by the extensive damaged trees, some of them of considerable size. But in spite of the apparent destruction, the effect of these ponds on the stream valleys is an amazing boost in biodiversity. They are used by different duck species, like the scops and the mallards. Canada geese not only benefit from the increase in flooded surface, but sometimes they use the beaver lodges as platforms to build their own nests. Beaver dams create a rich world of their own but the water must exit the ponds and continue its journey, growing and gaining more energy on its way. As it flows downhill, it encounters masses of hard rock that block its way and force it to create waterfalls. The activities of the squirrel are surveyed by the cooper's hawk, which can clearly hear not only the rodent's lips, but even the sound of its teeth gnawing at a nut. As the female hawk rests on her perch, twigs seem to rain from the sky. It is her partner busy gathering the best materials for the building of the nest. This is not an easy task. But the male must also hunt for two, as it feeds the female several times a day, bringing juicy morsels to favorite perching branches. When she is fed and satisfied, he hangs around, waiting for the right moment to mate. All that hawk activity is often accompanied by alarm calls of small birds. A titmouse with a bad wing 
knows it could become the next offering in the altar of raptor love. The female arrives with a large piece of bark to complete the building. The male continues with his non-stop work as a provider of food, meanwhile terrorizing the local small birds. Soon, the female will be ready to lay the eggs, and the mating will end. As temperatures get ever warmer, reptiles leave their winter torpor and become more active. The five lion skink some baits on a fallen log. Even the colorful box turtle is ready to enjoy the warmth of a fine spring morning. The ring-necked snake crawls on the forest floor, tasting the air for the smell of prey. The male hawk stretches as it gets its muscles ready for catching some other little bird, while the squirrel enjoys a nut it had cached months ago. Planning for the future is one of the keys for the success of this clever rodent. All plans can be cut short when the unexpected arrives. For the male hawk, this is his greatest hunting triumph. For the female, a truly royal gift. Hungry after the hunt, the male eats first. But when the female arrives, he takes a few last pieces and leaves the rest for her. Now, no one will retrieve the nuts in this squirrel's stash. Many of them will become new trees its final contribution to the life of the forest. As the spring advances, the woods become ever greener, covering the ancient, rounded Appalachians in a soft, leafy coat. The forest resembles a gloomy cave and at the feet of the awakening trees, the remains of dead ones slowly decompose. Death becomes a part of the renewal of life. One bird has the power and the right tools to contribute to the dismantling of the rotting logs, 
the pileated woodpecker. This bird is as large as a crow, and its beak, powered by strong neck muscles, acts as a jackhammer. It detaches pieces of bark at a scale impossible for its smaller cousins. Higher uphill, a chipmunk enjoys the warmth of the sun on a rock. In this drier habitat, it should be careful not to run into its worst nightmare. On sunny spring mornings, crevices in south-facing rocky walls may be occupied by timber rattlesnakes, warming up for the day. They have spent most of the winter in a dormant state, and now they must set out to hunt rodents, birds or other snakes. They taste the air for chemical cues of the presence of prey, then choose the best place to lay in ambush, waiting for the young wary to pass by. A humble, twisted tree trunk offers protection to a little bird family, safe here from most terrestrial predators. The tufted titmouse is busy catching insects and bringing them back to its hidden but hungry brood. But danger is never far. Right in front of the titmouse nest, the cooper's hawk has caught a small bird. He pauses briefly and flies to a favorite perch. Once there, he feeds at leisure. This prey he will finish to the last scrap. The female hawk now spends most of her time incubating the eggs, but will leave briefly to get her share of the male's kills. Just outside the forest, the prairies are also becoming bright green. Like small dinosaurs, crows patrol the short grass for any pickings. While turkeys also comb the meadows for food. For the adult males, 
the open spaces are also an ideal stage for their strutting. The prairies also lure some of the largest inhabitants of the Appalachian woods to come out to the open. After its winter sleep, a male black bear is eager for green shoots. A female bear also gets ready to venture out of the woods. She has two cubs from last year, and leading them takes patience. Young bears want to investigate everything, and they get easily distracted. What is this fascinating smell? But mom has a mission, to take her small family to the meadows while avoiding the attentions of wandering male bears. The second cub is taking its time. Reunited at last. White-tailed deer also come out to graze, but they prefer to remain close to the forest where they feel safer. At this time, some does are heavily pregnant and their fawns will be born in the late spring. Another mother bear has three large cubs and the whole family enjoy the warm spring morning out in the prairie. These are days of abundance in the Appalachian foothills. Wary as ever of getting to the ground, a grey squirrel stops on its head-first descent. The movements of its tail reflect the swirling concerns on its brain. It knows too well what has been happening to its friends who made mistakes on the ground. Should it keep going down? Should it turn around? At one point, its mind is turning like a windmill, and so is its tail. At last, we have a decision. There is no gain without risk. After all, maybe the strategy of the chipmunk is the safest. It seeks refuge on the many hiding places available at ground level, especially for such a small creature. This one interrupts its endless hurrying to enjoy a moment basking in the sun. It may be dangerously visible, but it feels reassured by the proximity of its home. Nothing could be so quick and silent to snatch such an alert chipmunk. Could it? Not even the fleetest chipmunk is totally safe from the acrobatic flight of the Cooper's Hawk.
back at the nest, the eggs will soon hatch and there will be more mouths to feed, implying even more hunting. No amount of caution is too much for the small inhabitants of the shady woods. Life is full of dangers for the forest creatures. But for many of them, the worst danger of all is us. For that reason, as we enter the woods, we are often surrounded by a circle of silence, and we may see very little happening. But the forest is alive, and we can be certain that it is seeing us. The life of the denizens of the forest is, by nature, shrouded in mystery, and whenever they allow us a glimpse, that is a wonderful gift. But there are so many stories going on that we will never know about. A myriad hidden lives that make up the web of nature in the Appalachians. <laughs>